The year is 1927, but the history is not our own. As Prohibition struggles on in the North, criminals become the real power in a town called Atlantic City. But sometimes, men aren't the only monsters in the city. Welcome to Seaside Scoundrels. The Pine Barrens can be a refreshing change of pace when you're used to a city like Atlantic City. It's somewhere between a swamp and a forest, I'd say. Cranberry bogs are a big business out here, almost as big as the illegal liquor stills that keep the alcohol flowing into the city. It's been about a day and a half since we hauled ass out of the city, running from the mob who sent everything from thugs to Nosferatu to try to kill us. Ganymede looks like he's about to faint from worry every time we pass another car on the road. The Brooks brothers don't seem to be affected by it, other than being a pain in my ass. But our trip has hit its first major roadblock. <sighs> We're out of gas. Well, hold up. You don't got an extra tank? Didn't really have time. We had to leave pretty quick. We'd be in New York by now if we didn't have to take all these back roads. I think I remember seeing a farm a few miles back. If I start walking now, maybe I can get a horse to ride to a place where we can buy some. Yeah, about that. About what? See, remember when we took that pit stop to grab a bite to eat? Yeah... I might have lost all our money betting on rooster fights. What do you mean, our money? Where's my wallet? Uh, right here. <laughs> I had six hundred dollars in there. It was supposed to be a sure win. Danny, you bet on a rooster called El Polo Destructo. That ain't even real Spanish. The other rooster's name was Greg. I wasn't going to bet on a rooster named Greg. Well, you should have. I don't remember there being rooster fights at any of our stops. There wasn't until I put money down on the table. <sighs> Unbelievable. Now what are we going to do? Stick our legs out and hope somebody picks us up? I do have pretty nice legs. Unbelievable. Huh. Welp. I think you two finally broke him. <laughs> it's okay. When we get back to the city, I'll pay him back with my next jackpot. So in about five to ten years, give or take. I rake in jackpots all the time. And immediately lose them. Yeah, but I do win them. It doesn't count if you lose them. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. We have to break even. That's, that's the name of the game here, at least. Look, as long as we steal from the poor, we break even. You have no idea how gambling works, do you? But I win. No, you don't. Uh, gentlemen, we got ourselves a lone man on a horse coming this way. Could you try to not look like savages? Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon? You boys hit a rough patch? Eh, just a bit. Ran out of gas. <laughs> you wouldn't happen to know the nearest place we could get some fuel, do you? Sure do. Just up the road a bit and make a left at the fork, you'll find yourself at the Watley Plantation. They'll help you. What kind of name is Watley? Their name. I feel like I've heard that name before. It's like some kind of joke or something. Whose farm is that? Watley. I said, whose farm is that? I don't think that joke works. Maybe their name was Watt, not Watley. Well, I think it's funny. Well, we have to ask them for help, so maybe you should keep your mouth shut instead of cracking jokes. <clears throat> Thanks for the tip. We'll head over there. My pleasure. Your best bet is to knock on the farm owner's door. Her name's Mrs. Leeds. Best of luck to y'all. Well, boys, let's get to walking. This car ain't gonna fix itself. Can I help you? Uh, yes, uh, we got stuck on the road and we're wondering if we could ask for some assistance. Mmm, and who is it that is asking? My name is Adam Carlyle, and these are my companions Ganymede and, uh, Sam and Dean. I see. One moment. I will see if the mistress is in a generous mood. 
Sam and Dean? You two are well-known bank robbers. I can't go around introducing you as Danny and Gene. Why? We do it all the time. And look where it's gotten you. I don't even look like a Dean. What would a Dean look like, anyway? <laughs> Way lamer. Probably some kind of accountant. Or maybe a salesman. He'd probably be taller, too. You say something, voodoo boy? Hey, whoa. I'm just a piano player. Oh, please. You doing magic is the worst-kept secret since the sinking of the Titanic. Danny, everyone's heard of the Titanic sinking. Yes, but everyone pretends it was an iceberg that sunk it, and not a kraken. Sure, Danny. Sure. Mistress Leeds will see you in the sitting room. Thank you kindly, ma'am. Don't screw this up. You know what? I'm gonna lag back here while you boys go on. I'm gonna get acquainted. So, why'd a pretty little southern thing like you come all the way up to Jersey? To get away from CD, no account, piano players like you. But, but, I, I didn't even, I, I didn't mean any, but I couldn't know what I know. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Please, have a seat. Refreshments will be brought in shortly. I love refreshments! I'm sure you're all tired from your work. Perhaps you can entertain me with some conversation. We don't often get travelers stopping around here, other than the usuals, picking up cranberries and dropping off supplies. Oh, we'd be happy to. Yeah. Uh, just came up from Atlantic City, heading to New York on business. <laughs> business, hmm? And what kind of business would that be? Traveling salesman. But I'm not a... Well, I am. Uh, these two help me out with the muscle. Exactly. Either they buy what we got or we sock them right in the gut. Not that kind of muscle. Oh, you sound like a right bunch of thugs. No, no, we're not thugs. We just beat people up until they buy things? No, you're supposed to just pick up the heavy stuff. It sounds like your companions don't know what their jobs are. It's complicated. So complicated, we don't even know how to explain it. Thank you, my dear. Please eat and drink as much as you'd like. I see that won't be a problem. This is delicious. I'm really sorry about them. They were raised in a barn, and not a nice one either. We appreciate the hospitality, truly. I'm glad to offer it. Now, what brings you to my humble little home? That's a great question. Well, our car ran out of gas on the road, and we were wondering if you could help us out. We don't have any money, but if you need any help around, we'd be happy to pitch in. As a matter of fact, I do have something for you. Well, nothing too difficult. I haven't heard from my aunt in almost a month now, and I'm getting mighty worried. She's a widow, lives a few miles from here. She gets in these moods every now and again, not wanting to see folks, but never this long. Would you mind checking up on her? That's it? Just knock on her door and check her pulse? In a matter of speaking, yes. That seems fairly easy. What's the catch? Oh, oh there's no catch. I've been meaning to do it myself. But you came at just the right time. It will take some time for us to tow your car by horse, and I have some spare gas in the garage already. Think of it as more of a way to pass the time and give me some peace of mind. Fair enough. We'd be happy to give you a hand, and we'll leave right away. Do you have any more of these? No, she doesn't have more biscuits. We're leaving. Bisco. I swear, it's like herding cats. Where's Ganymede? I believe I saw your other friend head to the kitchen. There is a side door there you can exit through. My handmaid will give you our phone number. Please, call me when you reach the house with whatever news you have. Will do. Let's hit the road, boys. This is the second creepiest house I've ever seen. What's the first? Our grandmother's house. It was full of ghosts. The whole house creaked every time it was windy. At least she gave us lots of candy. Good old Gram Gram. She died as she lived. Peacefully? Fighting off a mountain lion. Gram Gram sounds like a downright bear cat. 
You sure she's related to you two? Can't argue with that. All right, I'm going to knock. You two try not to scare this old lady into the grave, all right? He means you, Danny. He said you two. I'm not two people. You're two people worth of trouble. For our sake, let's hope she isn't home so she doesn't have to deal with this. Well, the way Leeds described their aunt, it doesn't seem like she was the traveling type. You think she's dead? I really don't want to go two for two with dead people in houses we visit. Maybe we should go visit Damien Vicario. With our luck, that'll solve all our problems. I don't know about you two, but being gunned down in the street ain't my idea of a good time. How about in a diner? I told you that wasn't our fault. Except it was. But you should have believed us when we lied about it. That's not how lying works. Yeah, you would know. I'm just going to open the door and pretend you didn't say that, Ganymede. Hello? Anyone home? Your niece sent us to check up on you? Huh. Either she's not home... Or she's dead. Well, let's not make any assumptions. Ganymede and Danny, you head upstairs and check the rooms. We'll look around down here. Got it. Mm, nice house. Oh, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, must have liked collecting dolls. Like? There must be 20 of them packed on that couch. Looks like they're made of porcelain or something. Pretty expensive. Hey, do you think we can pawn these off? There's no way in hell those are coming with us in the car. We can keep them in the trunk. We can burn them. Let's keep looking. More dolls and a piano. Gamamede would like that. Yeah, he'll have quite the audience. Nice dining room, though. Dining room and the kitchen. All empty. No dolls in here. Thank God. You really don't like dolls, do you? You have no idea. Hey, there's a phone in the kitchen there. Let me give Mrs. Leeds a call. Hello? Mrs. Leeds, this is Adam. Uh, I'm at your aunt's house. Oh, wonderful. Is she doing okay? Uh, actually, the whole place is quiet. I haven't found her yet. Just wanted you to know we got here and we're looking around. This place is kind of eerie. Oh, that's fairly normal. She's a quiet sort of woman, but it does worry me she didn't come to greet you. A few of the rooms are dusty. You have my apologies for the state of things. Uh, that's all right. We'll manage. Just wish all the dolls weren't there. Uh, your aunt must have loved them. They're everywhere. Can't say I'm a fan. Dolls? I'm not sure what you mean. My aunt doesn't own any dolls. Hey, Adam. I just went back into the sitting room and, well, uh, the dolls are gone. I should go. Wait, Adam? Adam? When you say they're gone... I mean, they aren't there anymore. I can't find them. How the hell do you lose a room full of dolls? Keep looking. It's not like they just got up and... Holy shit! Get your gun ready. We need to go upstairs and make sure they're okay. You got it. Holy shit! They have knives for teams! Kick him if you have to. Just get moving and don't let them surround you. Ow! Get off my leg, you little bastard! Danny! Danny me! In here! I think I hate dolls now. Me too, especially when they move on their own and have razors for teams. So, what's the plan, boys? Well... If we find some rope or bed sheets to tie together, we might be able to climb out a window and get out of here. What about the widow? What about the widow? Have you seen those things? They probably ate her. Uh, guys? I doubt they ate her. We didn't find any body or, or traces of her. She might have escaped. I, I doubt some old lady would do better against those things than us. Guys, uh, I found the widow. He told you so. She's dead. Ah, oh, great. Two for two. She doesn't look too bad, though. Huh. Looks like she died pretty peacefully, actually. Aw, just the way Gram-Gram didn't. Ganymede, check her pulse. Come on, why do I have to? 
We are guarding the door. <sighs> of course he sends me over. Yep. She's dead, Adam. Mystery solved. Can we leave now? Oh yeah, we can go now. Let's see about getting those- Dead people aren't supposed to sit up. Run! Ow! Ah! What the hell? She's got metal bits sticking out of her mouth. <gasps> it's like the little dolls made one really big old lady doll. We are getting the hell out of this place! Down the stairs! Adam, they're, they're blocking the door. Hey, is that a cellar door? No time! Get downstairs and barricade the door! I can't see shit down here. That's better. What do we got here? Boxes... No, just tons of boxes. And they're all opened. You think the dolls got shipped to her? That turns this into a murder case. And that door might not hold for too long. Search for some sort of invoice or shipping order. That might help us. Hey, I got something. Looks like some sort of inventory. Bring the light over. 25 porcelain dolls, 6 sets of steak knives, and one toy monkey. Did anyone see a toy monkey? No, but I know for damn sure those dolls have knives for teeth. Ugh. Does it say who sent it? No, unfortunately not. Well, keep looking. We need something before we leave here. Got it. Bring that light over here. Ah. Hey, take a look at this. Delivery to Annabelle Watley. Paid for by one Agatha Leeds. Wait, no, no, no. It, it's not Watley. It looks more like... Like Whaley. Oh. Oh, this is bad. This is real bad. Mrs. Leeds sent these over? She probably knew they'd kill her aunt. No, no, Adam, you don't understand who she is. She... Not now. We need to leave. There's a cell door near the back. Let's go. <sighs> okay. Now, we need to get some help. Find out a way to destroy those things. <sighs> no, no, it's not that easy, Adam. I'm telling you, Mrs. Leeds is... What the hell? Why is the house on fire? Well, there was a lot of wood and straw in the basement, so... You lit it on fire? Well, yeah, you wouldn't. There's evidence in there! Now we have no proof at all! Uh... Mulligan? You don't get a do-over on arson. Listen, listen, Adam, it's fine. We don't need no proof at all. You don't understand who Mrs. Leeds is. I don't care who she is. Adam, she's sold as the damn state of Jersey. What? The Waitleys. They're an old family of sorcerers and witches. They've been digging around these parts ever since George Washington's time. And Mrs. Leeds, well, she's an old relative of theirs, only, only so much worse. She's a very powerful witch who'd been sending around this place for centuries. They say she even spawned the damn Jersey Devil. Seriously, Adam, you need to let this one go. But she could kill us all. Seriously, we need to get your damn car and leave this place far behind. <sighs> All right, we'll do it your way. Ah, Mr. Carlyle. I'm glad to see you're back. Some of the farmers came by to tell me my aunt's house caught a blaze. Is everything all right? Everything's... Uh, it's decent, ma'am. Thank you. Where are your companions? Are they all right? Oh, everyone made it out just fine. Uh, your aunt was deceased, Mrs. Leeds. I'm very sorry to tell you. Oh, my. She was getting up in years. I just wasn't expecting it so soon. What started the fire? One of my comrades started it by... Knocking over a candle. I see. Well, I suppose I will simply have to forgive you. Mistakes do happen. <laughs> that they do, Mrs. Leeds. That they do. Well, your end of the bargain is complete, and I intend to keep mine. Your car is out ready out back, if you like. 
have a safe and pleasant journey to New York. Uh, we will, and thank you for your hospitality. I have to ask, though, why did you not ask about what I said on the phone? About the dolls. <laughs> Mr. Carlyle, my aunt didn't own any dolls, and you would be hard-pressed to find any evidence she ever did. Not even a delivery of them? I'm sure if we stopped by the local post office... You would find a shipping order for a rocking chair I ordered for her. Now, Adam, if I were a more paranoid sort, I'd say you're trying to accuse me of something. You're lucky I'm a kind and trusting woman. Trusting enough to take the word of four complete strangers who barged into my dear aunt's house, found her dead, and burned the place half to the ground. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to handle the specifics of the estate I just inherited. You do take care now, won't you? I will, Mrs. Leeds. I will. Thank you for listening to Seaside Scoundrels, a Deadlands Noir Adventure, starring Ray Jernigan as Adam Carlyle, Vito Terranova as Gene Brooks, Ryan Bixo as Danny Brooks, Kathleen Burns as Agatha Leeds, Crystal Hester as The Maid, and Dan Bernardo as Ganymede and the composer of the show's music. This show has been produced and recorded by me, Odinus. Feel free to follow the show on the Audio Avatar channel on iTunes and Stitcher, and check out the latest news about the channel on Twitter, Facebook, or on our website at www.audio-avatar.com. Tune in next time for the continued adventures of the Seaside Scoundrels. What? But, but I, I mean, I didn't even, but I, I couldn't, I wasn't even implying that, you know, I could, what, I, that, surely, surely that wasn't good. <clears throat> okay, Dan, visualize this. You're flirting with a cute maid. She shoots you down. Come on, this hasn't been the first time. You, you can do this. To me, that just sounds, that's so insulting. Oh my gosh. What? But what? I, I just meant that, you know, I could, uh, well, balls. <laughs> Did not intend to say balls. Oops. You started the recording as soon as I got in the room because you thought it'd be funny. There, have I damaged enough grammar for you, Ray? And then Big So. Aw, just the way Graham Graham didn't. Aw, just the way Graham Graham didn't. So dark. <laughs> I just picture Big So having like that Saturday morning kids show solved voice. Oh, it's like the little dolls made one really big old lady doll. It's like the little dolls made one really big old lady doll. Good lord. Gee whiz. I would love to see like a Scooby-Doo adventure with these assholes. <laughs> Gram Gram sounds way cooler than you two. Gram Gram sounds like one hard tomato. She sounds like one jazzy dame. Gram Gram sounds neato. Gram Gram's totally tubular. Bruh. Gam Gam sounds way more bang up than you two. I mean, don't get me wrong, Gram Gram sounds like a top bird and everything, but... Gam, straight up to heaven. Hard-boiled Gram Gram. You boys hold my teeth. I need to shoot at these... I don't know, palookas. Got a fist full of cabbage and you need something to do on a Saturday night, you go talk to Graham Graham Brooks. Gam, straight up to heaven. Yeah, your grandma's a real tough guy. She fights mountain lions and argues with cops. Just about little things like what color the sky truly is behind the Illuminati screens. Graham Graham's also committed. <laughs> <laughs>
I picture Graham Graham being like this flapper that dual wields Tommy guns and just wrestles tigers. I want to see Graham Graham's show. Graham Graham, she's a bang up girl. Graham Graham, she's suplexes sharks. Graham Graham, these words don't rhyme, but we're not paid to rhyme. It's a show about Graham Graham. <laughs> Ordinarily, yes, it would be on fire at the first sign of the doll before it even moved. But <laughs> that goes without saying. Oh, and that turns this into a murder case. I'm only traffic and vice, damn it. I'm not even a real cop. Your perspective as far as where, because you've been there, is it aunt or aunt? What, what would an East Coast person say? Yeah, because I, I always said aunt, but that's just because I'm an asshole. Did I turn into Shaggy on that last bit when my voice cracked? Zoinks! Bloopers in the booth with Ray. I wish it was a funnier blooper. All right, let's do this. Get bit by a crazy old lady. Not the first time. Well, when we have Deadlands Noir 70s, I guess Deadlands Soul Train, I'm not sure. I I would... All right, if you're listening to this pinnacle, new Kickstarter plan. We would set it in Detroit. It would be great. Oh my God. De- Dead- Deadlands Soul or Deadlands Motown. Oh my God. They ain't no mountain high enough to save your ass. Oh my god, no, we're not doing Deadlands Motown. Though, if we're be honest here, if we're doing jazz singers, then yes, that would be the logical conclusion if it's 70s. Or disco, I suppose. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be, oh my god, instead of the Hyde formulas, it's just like magically treated cocaines they have in sc- studio, studio 666. Yeah, yeah, they just huff powdered hide, crystallized hide off of mirrors using $100 bills, but they're Confederate notes because, you know, states never rejoined after that. Good lord, this got dark. All right, I'm getting out of here.